Welcome to the Secrets of the Bible channel, Why Sexual Sins Destroy One's Soul. In giving the Ten Commandments the Lord God declared, Thou shalt not commit adultery. In Exodus 20 14, the wise King Solomon said, The adulterer destroys his own soul. In Proverbs 6, 32, the Apostle Paul tells us in Hebrews 13, 4, Fornicators and adulterers God will judge. We live in an age where promiscuity is encouraged. TV shows glorify it. Musicians sing about it. Society glorifies it. It is somewhat of a liberation, a freedom to live life however you want. There is an increasing need for the Church of God to educate believers on the relevance of keeping their souls from the destruction which sexual sin brings. Sexual sins did not begin in this generation. It has been an age-long problem down the history of mankind, notably the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, who were practicing sexual immorality until God judged them with fire and brimstone. Several other examples of men and women in scripture had bitter stories to tell from the consequences of their sexual sin. Beloved, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. This is a powerful scripture that reveals that you not only sin against God when you commit sexual sins, it further says that sexual sin is a sin committed against your own body. Imagine a man destroying himself. Sexual sin blinds its victims by making them to focus on the momentary pleasure, but despising the destruction of their souls. The more people commit sexual sins, the more they subject their souls to weakness and destruction. This is the reason they become addicted in the long run. They no longer get satisfied with their acts, and they resort to doing silly things just to keep up their desires and longings. Sexual sins destroy the soul. Each time of pleasure spent in them are moments of downward spiritual movements. They keep getting farther away from God. No one on earth will ever derive full satisfaction from sins. People who indulge in them keep going downward until they reach the points of regret, where it is too late to act otherwise. A good illustration from the scripture is the story of Samson. He had great power, but he lacked discipline. He was a wise man, but this one area of his life led him down the wrong path. One of the paths that lead to destruction is walking in the ways of adultery and fornication. Adultery, which is a sexual sin, seems to be pleasurable, but we see the end result is the destruction of one's very own soul. Let us not lie to one another. There is pleasure in sin. There is a great deal of pleasure in fornication and adultery. But aside from the pleasure, there are great repercussions of these sins, one of which is the destruction of one's very own soul. You don't just wake up one day and decide to become an adulterer. You become an adulterer because you choose a path to go down. No one falls suddenly into adultery. It is usually a thought nurtured, planned, and acted in the heart before it is acted in reality. Adultery is a downward path. The moment you start nursing such thought in your heart, you begin to journey down a spiritual slope until your fall becomes evident to all. Allow me to speak to those who are considering or pondering the thought of adultery. My brother and sister, don't do it. You see, once you open that door, it will become very difficult to close it. Adultery is not like a light switch you can just turn on and turn off when you want. It is something that will pull you in deeper and deeper and deeper. It is something that will destroy your life. To the point, you will look around and wonder how did I get here? Don't do it. Now, to those who have or are committing adultery, first and foremost, it is important to know that adultery is not the unforgivable sin. God is willing to forgive you. God is wanting to forgive you. Confess your sin to him and forsake it. Don't get comfortable in that sin. Believers need to know that this sin is relentless and it eats up the soul deeply. And once fornication or adultery becomes a stronghold in your life, it won't let go easily. This is the reason some people are held bound to it, even when they are no longer comfortable with their actions. All Christian youth should know that if they are overcome by sexual sin at their single age, marriage may not be a remedy for it. Any single Christian that cannot prayerfully discipline himself or herself to live above fornication will only be adulterous in marriage. Our body is the temple of God. If we make it a gateway for the destruction of our souls through sexual sins, then God himself will fight us. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. 
for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Although the walls of faithfulness has been greatly broken in several marriages, God wants to use the Christian family to rebuild it and make everyone to come to the understanding that it is very possible to be faithful in marriage. The Bible is our constitution as believers. Any law or policy that is against biblical standards for our marriages are not to be imbibed. Adultery and extramarital affairs may be celebrated in our society, but we must not join the multitudes to act against what the Bible says about our marriage and home. Do your children see you not being faithful in your marriage? Is that the example you are setting? The Bible says that in marriage, the husband and the wife are no longer two entities, but one. If this is true, then it means that every husband is expected to see his wife, not as a separate entity, but as one with him, and the wife is supposed to see her husband as part of herself. Marriage is in itself a covenant of faithfulness. If you are not ready to be committed to being faithful, then there is no reason to have married in the first place. If God demands us all to be faithful to our bosses and leaders who are not one with us, how much more he demands faithfulness to our spouses, to whom we are joined together. Husbands, you have a covenant with your wives, and it is the covenant of faithfulness. If you break it, you will be guilty with God. Wives, you committed yourself to be faithful to your marriage the day you accepted to spend your life with your husband. How true are you to that commitment? Are you faithful to your husband? If you are keeping secrets from your spouse, then you are not faithful. The Bible says that the two, both the husband and his wife, shall become one flesh. No matter what argument or excuse we think we have against this, it is unscriptural and unacceptable. Hebrews 1.3.4 Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. This is a biblical warning. We need to stop ignoring it. Husbands and wives, God will judge all adulterers. Please stay faithful. In my opinion, it is harder for people to stay faithful now since the creation of social media and technology. I have seen men and women leave their spouse because a high school sweetheart messaged them on social media and old feelings came flooding back in. Or you see a young couple having issues in their marriage because the husband is comparing his wife to an Instagram model. The truth is those people aren't real and if they are, they get paid to look that way. Social media may not be a trigger point for you, but you know what the area, the enemy tries to tempt you to be unfaithful. You see some husbands doing their best to present themselves as a single man. You are not single behave like a husband. You see wives presenting themselves as if they are a single young lady. You are not a single lady. Behave like a wife. You can't behave the same way you did when you were single. Stop acting single. The blessings of faithfulness to our marriages are so numerous. You can't build a happy and glorious home on the foundation of unfaithfulness. But joy, peace of mind, and progress are all offshoots of faithfulness from each party in a home. Faithfulness has great rewards that wealth cannot give. A wealthy home that is built on unfaithfulness can never experience peace or joy. Do you know how much mental energy it takes to cheat on your spouse? Hiding your phone, getting nervous every time they pick up your phone, lying about your whereabouts, always being on edge. That is not peace. If you want true peace in your life, stay faithful. There is such a great spiritual and physical synergy in a home where the spouses are faithful to each other, apart from the joy, peace and progress which the family will enjoy. Such a family will raise godly children, 